Hey everybody, it's Dr. May. How are you? All right, I hope you're having a good day and you're ready for some skills. All right, so um, we're going to start the middle path module today. So my plan is to do an intro of what the middle path module is all about and then focus on dialectics. So that's the D in DBT. All right, so um, I'll get this up for you before I start getting into it. Okay, so walking the middle path, right? So if we look at that picture, right, it's kind of like there's trees on one side and there's trees on another side, but we're just gonna try to go down the middle. So it's kind of a metaphor for the way we think about things, that instead of being extreme on the one side or the other side, we're gonna try to go down the middle and have more of a balanced point of view about things, right? Because if we're very extreme, chances are we're an emotional mind. An emotional mind might be what of what led you to DBT in the first place. So having that more middle ground gray area thinking rather than black and white thinking helps to put us more in a wise mind, okay? So walking the middle path really is about getting back into wise mind, okay? And if you wanna know more about what wise mind is, I, I suggest checking out um, mindfulness module or you could do my mindfulness module video about the three states of mind because wise mind is in there. Okay, so here's a fun fact about the middle path. So did you know that DBT didn't make up that term. It's actually been around for like a few thousand years and it started with Buddhism. So Buddhism talks about the middle path or the middle way in terms of avoiding certain extremes also. Okay, so their extremes that they were talking about is the middle path between self-denial and self-indulgence. So some of the people back then a few thousand years ago thought that they could attain enlightenment by depriving their physical selves of all kinds of comfort. So they talked about these ascetic people and they would barely eat and they would barely take care of themselves because they thought that if they deny the physical, the spiritual would be more prominent and then they would attain enlightenment. But Buddha realized that that's not really true at all. Um, but then again, self-indulgence isn't really so great either. So eventually he found the middle path and started teaching that to people. Um, and one of the tools they use is they call it the eightfold path. That's eight different ways that they could achieve that middle ground or enlightenment. All right, but getting back to DBT. All right, so it, the DBT talks about certain goals for the middle path module. So one of them is to learn how to think more dialectically. So that involves identifying what they call dialectical dilemmas and then coming to a more dialectical approach after you work with the dilemma. Okay, so plenty of more about that to come and that's gonna be the focus of today. All right, um, and then they talk about um, two ends of a dialectic that are, that's one of the foundations of DBT. So on the one hand, we're gonna talk in a lot of detail about validation and acceptance. And on the other hand, we're gonna talk a lot about different change skills, right? So specifically behaviorism and also some ways to motivate ourselves to change. So on the one hand, we're talking about acceptance, accept you the way you are. And on the other hand, at the same time, maybe some things need to change in your life. So we're gonna handle both ends of this in a little more detail in future videos, all right? So dialectics, ah, so what are dialectics? Um, in DBT groups, I get asked this all the time and it's easy to forget. So you might wanna rewatch re this video if you need to in case you forget what dialectics are about because it's not a word we always use every day unless you're in DBT, in which case you probably do use it every day. Okay, so what are dialectics? So dialectics involve two things that seem like they're opposite and they have nothing in common, right? They're just like happy and sad, like well, they're total different feelings, right? Like what do they have in common? Like those masks on the, on the screen here. But they're both true and valid at the same time. And you know, there's maybe a bigger thing, a bigger concept that, that subsumes all of them. You know, and there's a bigger whole that is that they're both part of. Okay, so let's say happy feels very different from sad, but they're both feelings, right? They're part of our larger feeling repertoire. So they're really not opposite at all. They're just part of a whole. Okay, and recognizing that is part of dialectical thinking. And when we get stuck on one side, that's you know more of an emotional mind problem. Okay, so let's break down the word dialectic so it doesn't seem like such a big vocabulary word. Okay, so the, the word dialectic sounds kind of similar to the word dialogue, right? So what's a dialogue? Like, let's say, you know, you're talking with somebody, okay, and you're talking about a certain topic, and you have one opinion, and the other person has almost an opposite opinion. 
right? So what's in common? You're both um, having a certain response to a larger topic, right? And maybe if you go do some back and forths about that topic, you'll come to a, a higher understanding or truth, okay? And that's how we work through a dialectic. So in philosophy, they did this process quite a bit, and they talked about a thesis, which means an idea, and an antithesis, which is the opposite idea. So anytime they say you come up with an idea, it automatically calls up the opposite idea. So if I say hot, it automatically calls up ideas about cold, right? Or if I call up the idea about happy, it might automatically call up the idea about sad. Or, you know, um, what's another one? Let's say closeness and distance, okay? And there's a way to put them together and think about, you know, what, what can come from them, and that's a synthesis, okay? So, as it says below, in a dialogue, people may enter with different or conflicting opinions, but through discussion, they can come to a truth, synthesis, or resolution. And that's the whole idea, okay? Now, um, I wanna do some more vocabulary here. So we're gonna talk about dialectical dilemmas and dialectical thinking, okay? But they're both kind of different, all right? So I just wanna clarify what we're talking about. So a dialectical dilemma, as it says on the left, is when you're stuck on one side. So if there's two different things we're talking about. It's like you're emotionally attached to one side and maybe completely forgetting about the other or you're invalidating the other side, right? So I might think I'm right and you're wrong. And I'm completely stuck in this idea that I'm right. But maybe I'm missing the fact that you have some things that make a lot of sense too. Right, so that would, putting that together would be dialectical thinking, like how can I have a point and you have a point? How could I have had some contribution to this issue and you had some contribution to this issue, right? So putting that together is dialectical thinking, right? And that's seeing the whole, it's, the, it's more of a wise mind approach and that's really what we're driving for, right? So can you see how when we're emotional, we can get stuck in the dilemma part? where like, no, I'm right, no, you're wrong, I'm right, you're right. right? So it's like you're very intense about that one side. And so if you're an emotional mind, that's often what happens, especially interpersonally in an argument, but also within yourself, you know, and just the way you, you think about things. Um, I also happen to look up the word dilemma, just for the heck of it. So dilemma is defined as a situation in which a difficult choice has to be made between two or more alternatives especially equally undesirable ones. So it's about choosing one side or the other, but dialectical thinking is about considering both sides. So it's a both and consideration, right? This is true and that is true, not just one or the other, okay? So it's more incorporative of the whole. All right, hope you're with me, all right? So what's some clues that you're stuck in the dialectical dilemma? So that's the part when you're stuck in one side. Okay, so you're probably feeling emotional, right? Because you're very intent and intense about your point of view. And maybe someone's feeling very differently from you. Um, black and white thinking, right? So these are extremes of thinking that come up. And it's very rigid, okay? And rigidity and chaos are signs of unhealthy thinking. Flexibility and integration are signs of healthy thinking, right? So guess what side that's on? That's more of a dialectical thinking side. The dialectical dilemma side, when you're stuck in one side of the dialectic, is more of that rigid black and white thinking, okay, which could kind of get us into trouble sometimes. Okay, um, interpersonally, if you're stuck in a dilemma, your dialectical dilemma, you might be in the middle of an argument, right? It's me and what I think versus you and what you think. And we're thinking, I'm right and you're wrong, okay? Um, and also, if even if you're not in the room with somebody, but you're like rehashing a situation in your mind, and you're pretty sure you're right about it. Like, I know I was right the way I saw this, the way I did this, and you're stuck on your rightness, but the situation's not really getting any better. So chances are there's something else you might have to let in or consider in order to diffuse the whole thing. All right, so let's go back to this again. So now in the next part, we're gonna talk more about dialectical thinking. So this is more of the wise mind integration that we're gonna focus on here. So that's what we're aiming for. All right, so how to think dialectically. So again, this has to do with shifting the way we think and perceive things. So one thing is that that helps is remembering that opinions are not facts. Just because I think it 
it doesn't necessarily mean it's true, right? So if I loosen up on that a little bit and I say, well, I think this way, you think a different way. That's your opinion, that's very nice, and this is my opinion. It just shows that they're different. You know, I don't necessarily have to make us right or wrong. And that kind of helps us come together. Um, another thing we can do is to explore our options and be flexible and that there's many ways to solve a problem. So it's not just about that one thing you're thinking about. Maybe your target behavior isn't the only thing you can do to help the situation. Maybe there's other things you can try, right? So broadening it out, going to door number one, door number two, door number three, option A, B, or C helps us think more dialectically. Observing fully, ah, mindfulness, right? So you have to zoom out and see the whole picture as clearly as you can. Check the facts, take in all the information you can, so then therefore you can make a wise mind decision, all right? That's also part of dialectics. Um, like I said before, it's both and, right? Not just either or. So incorporating everything. And emotionally, remembering that it's okay to feel more than one thing at a time, and we often do, right? Um, it's, let's say, um, you see somebody laughing and having a good time, and you're saying, wait a minute, just a few minutes ago, you said you were really depressed about something. What's up with that laughing? Are you, are you, were you lying to me? Well, maybe she is still depressed, but on the outside, she's just you know, getting along with people and having a good time in that moment. So she could have some joy and some sadness at the same time, right? So that's definitely possible. So we have to make room for more than just one thing. All right, so more, how to think dialectically. So another thing we could try is to avoid assumptions. Remember that old saying, don't assume? makes an ass out of you and me, right? So a lot of times it kind of does. So just don't assume you're right or that you could read other people's minds or that you know, you're pretty sure that this is what's going on. You could be wrong, right? We got to humble up a little bit. Remember that we don't know everything. We can't possibly you know, read other people's minds and know what they're thinking. Just because we think they're thinking something, we could be wrong, right? So allowing those other possibilities helps us think dialectically. And also remembering that we're not perfect, right? So it's, if you think you're right all the time, well, maybe, probably not. All right, avoiding judgment or blame. So that's finger pointing and saying, well, you did this and you did that. So instead, you could express things with I statements. So that diffuses a polarity too. Well, instead of you, you did something wrong, it's just, I feel a little bit disappointed right now. Okay, so that's a little bit more middle ground. Okay, so benefits of dialectical thinking. In case it doesn't appeal to you yet, um, we'll go over a few benefits. So one, um, because it's helping you be flexible, it makes you more adaptive to stressful situations and more resilient, therefore. So when you, when you give yourself other options, you see it more clearly, you take into account other points of view, it gives you a better shot at coping with it better, right? And weathering the storms of life. Um, dialectical thinking also helps you to stay calmer because getting stuck on one side of a dialectic or extremist black and white thinking is associated with being super emotional. So when you diffuse that, you take both sides into account, you tend to calm down, all right? And you also will help better relationships and fewer arguments, right? And one way to do dialectical stuff in um, an argument is to validate the other person, because then you're considering their side, you're showing them that you hear their side, and then that calms the whole thing down. So it's not just you focusing on what you think, you're letting the person know you respect what they think or what their experience is, okay? So I hope you were enticed by this intro and that dialectical thinking makes some sense to you. All right, the next video I do is gonna be about a lot of examples of dialectical thinking and dialectical dilemmas, okay? So because it's a little long, I'm gonna put it you know, in another one, but that's a great one that you'll be able to refer to um, if you want to see how it plays out in real life. Okay, so thanks for listening. Hope this makes sense, and um, I'll talk to you next time. All right, bye everybody.